All right, so I want to get started and thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me well, my name is Jamie O'Regan. I am the Director of Alumni Relations and Events here at the Berkeley Carroll School. Uh, and in my past work, I worked in higher education, helping support students in various ways, which is why this programming is really important to me and why I want to make sure that we can help bridge the conversation and some of the trepidations you may have a bit more about this journey from, uh, you know, Berkeley Carroll into your next experiences in collegiate life. Uh, so with me today, I have three uh, former colleagues um, and folks who work at various components of higher education. Uh, I sent you their bios, but I'll also drop in the chat and hear um, their uh, information and want to make sure that you have a chance to ask questions from them that you may have so you can put them in the chat as well as you can include them in the um, at the end, we'll have about 10 minutes or so for you to ask questions. So to start off, I just wanna give each of our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves, say hello, uh, and tell you a little bit about what they do in their day to day. So I'm gonna start off by passing the baton to Rachel. All right, thank you so much, Jamie. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining today and congratulations uh, on being in the home stretch of your of your high school careers. This is so exciting. Jamie was just telling us you're preparing for graduation. So kudos to all of you. Uh, my name is Rachel Dubois, and I am one of the associate directors of career services at NYU Wagner. And Wagner is New York University's School of Public Service. So I work with graduate students who are going to pursue work in government, policy, health management, social impact, urban planning, a wide range of public service enterprises. And as a career services advisor, I meet one-on-one -on -one with students and alumni for advising sessions. I host workshops and information sessions about different employers and different kinds of jobs. And I also teach a class called Composing Your Career, which helps students think about their next professional steps. So essentially, I am serving as a resource for the Wagner community to make sure that we are preparing public service leaders to really make an impact in their field. Um, and I will pass the baton to Daniel. Hi friends, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Daniel Tomei. I am currently at Thomas Edison State University. I am the community engagement program manager there. Um, and I oversee our academic community impact program. So students who are familiar with doing service learning projects or community service projects um, with organizations, I help students find the opportunity to connect what they're passionate about in their courses and make the connection with partners all throughout the region or throughout where they are. Um, Thomas Edison is predominantly an online institution today. And so, be it that we have students um, throughout the country and throughout the world, uh, because a large number of our students are also in the military. And so we try to support them as much as possible while they're abroad finishing and completing their degrees. But my experience has been predominantly working with students in uh, Harlem at City College of New York. Uh, I've worked with students at Stockton University right down uh, the shore uh, in Atlantic City. And I've really been focused more on getting opportunities to work with students on connecting them to projects that they're passionate about and finding ways that they can make uh, an opportunity to create change. So I adjunct at Stockton and I oversee uh, freshman seminar courses, uh, specifically called our Tools for Social Change courses, our Perspectives on Civic Engagement. And so I really support students in doing some community organizing and helping them better understand how they could be civically engaged. Uh, personally and in the community. And so we'll go more into detail, but I'm gonna pass it over to Nick. Hi everyone, well, I'm excited for, to be here and thanks to Jamie for inviting me. Um, I'm a, an assistant director at the University of um, Southern California at the law school. So like Rachel, I work with graduate students. Surprisingly enough, um, law school is more than just a Juris Doctor or JD degree, because I actually manage um, part of our graduate and international program. So I get to help students through the admissions process and also academically advise them. So I get to help them kind of figure out their coursework and make sure that their classes meet their own academic and professional goals. 
Um, but my big role is just to make sure that everyone is successful in their studies. So I help students track their courses and degree progress and meet their graduation requirements. And I always want to be in the know if something is going on because I want to make sure that we feel supported from a lot of different areas. And one of the other big part of my job is helping them to connect to different resources and services on campus. So um, I work a lot with my counterparts like Rachel does in career services, but also with financial aid and other departments on campus to make sure that our students know um, what resources and services that they can utilize and take advantage of during their time at law school with us. Great, thank you all. And I want to apologize to the students here. I realize in my Zoom settings before I set up this meeting, the chat feature is not here at the bottom. Um, so you're going to have to ask questions in person at the end. Uh, so we'll, we'll save a little bit extra time for that as well, just to make sure that everyone's questions are answered. Uh, and if we don't get to them, you can always email them to me and I'll make sure that we facilitate getting you those responses. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, throw out another question to our panelists, which is um, what are some of the key traps or um, situations that you think students frequently fall into uh, that you want them to potentially be wary of or be proactive about approaching um, as they're entering into this new experience? So uh, Daniel, I'm gonna start with you. So, Usually I, I focus on two different areas when I start off with my freshman seminar. And when I talk to new students who have worked in my um, former capacity in our Center for Community-Based Learning, it's don't get too caught up on it. Um, don't allow yourself to be afraid of something different and try it really allowing yourself to be open and honest with yourself. Um, Quite often I tell students grades are not the most important thing and it's about the experience that you end up creating. And so I facilitate a large number of relationship building uh, opportunities for our students to have a deeper understanding on that, that they know who their key contacts are gonna be throughout their experience, throughout their career in their undergrad or in their grad experience. And so it's really important to be good at building relationships. So we have a great little a project that I have students do, which is essentially getting to know you. And the getting to know you project is, um, I have access to some resources and funds. And I tell our students to go in non-pandemic worlds, uh, go and have a cup of coffee with uh, somebody who they, they get to choose out of my hat. And so it might be the Dean of Students it might be the vice president of student affairs. It might be one of the janitors in the community. It might be a faculty member uh, that has nothing to do with what their interests are. But the goal is for the students to have a deeper understanding on really trying to better understand and connect with somebody. I think that's the most important thing is that you're going to school for so many reasons, but I think if you can walk away with understanding it's about the relationships that you're building that are gonna be of your benefit. That's really the key thing um, that I really wanna make sure that uh, students that are going into school really understand. Great, um, Nick? Yeah, I think one of the big traps I always see students kind of fall into is waiting to the last minute on sharing different issues or situations that could have been proactively dealt with in the beginning or the middle of the semester. So as an example right now, it's actually the last day of classes for a lot of my students today. And just this past week, I've been getting a lot of email issues or issue, emails about issues um, about their experiences in class, um, reasons why they've been falling behind, why they haven't been submitting homework or missing classes overall. Um, and so I just wish they kind of reached out to us or to me in particular um, earlier this semester so that way I could kind of help them and give them advice or walk them through, through these issues instead of um, on the last day of classes. So I would always recommend if there is an issue that you are dealing with, I know college can be stressful, it can be challenging, there's a lot of things that go on. For um, many of you it might be your first time, you know, being independent, so you could feel lost as well. But there are people there to help you um, every step of the way. So just be proactive in 
situations where you could talk to your advisor. Many of you probably will be assigned a faculty advisor or a professional staff advisor, but you could always talk to them um, in the beginning of the semester, throughout the semester, or even at the end of the semester, but just be proactive in just dealing with these issues and your advisors could definitely help you kind of deal with them and troubleshoot the issues and give you the advice that you would need to be successful in your classes. Um, I just wouldn't want you to wait to the last minute because there might not be a lot of help that we can provide like on the last day of classes, like for some of my students. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, I agree with everything that Daniel and Nick just said. I was just nodding along and I'm like wanted to give the thumbs up. I totally on board with all of that. I also want to point out two things that I frequently see first year students do that I just want to demystify and illuminate a little bit for you all. One is oftentimes when you're a first year student, it feels like everyone else has it all figured out. It feels like everybody else knows what they're doing. They know what they're, how does everybody else know what they wanna major in? How does everybody else know how to get to class on time? How does everybody else know where the parties are? Like, how does everybody know everything? Um, and I just wanna tell you, they don't. Everybody's figuring this out together. At least once a week, I have a conversation with a student who says, I'm behind, I feel anxious, I feel scared. I don't know how everybody else is on the right path and I feel like I'm not. Um, and then right after that, somebody else will come in my office and say, everybody else has it figured out. So I want to reassure you that a lot of times when it looks like everybody else has it figured out, um, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They might feel scared. They might feel anxious. They might be struggling in a class, but we put our best faces forward. And so it's hard to see what's really going on. And I love Daniel's idea about going out for a cup of coffee and talking with people one-on-one -on -one and being like, all right, let's, let's get into it. Let's give each other the inside scoop and making connections so you don't feel alone and you don't feel like you're the only one who's trying to figure things out. The other thing is I often see first-year students get so excited about how many things there are to do at the university. There's amazing clubs, great organizations, societies to join, classes to take. It can be really easy to overcommit in your first year. You get there and you go to the club fair and everything sounds great. And so you sign up for everything and you can't possibly, there's only one of you and there's only 24 hours in a day. You can't possibly get to everything. So it's important to be really honest with yourself, right? About your own time management skills. And there's no wrong way and there's no right way, but you have to tell yourself, am I really a morning person? Do I really wanna sign up for an 8 a.m. class? Do I like being able to sleep in on the weekends? Do I wanna sign up for the running club and have to get up every weekend and go running? So ask yourself, what is really true for you? What do you most enjoy? Where do you thrive the most? And balance your time. And this will come with trial and error. It's okay if you, you know, mess a couple things up, um, but you, you are going to want to be protective of your time. You're gonna to need to sleep. You're gonna to need to do your laundry. You're gonna to need to eat and drink water. Um, and if you commit to everything, you can't do the self-care that you'll need to do. So, so watching out for that is important. Those are all really, really good things to note, uh, guilty of overcommitting. So recognize that uh, and can cop to that being a, a truth that I experienced. Um, in a similar vein, are there any helpful um, hacks or websites or resources in particular uh, that you wanna highlight that you think would be really useful for students to come in knowing about? Uh, so Nick, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, I think the big one is just, again, everyone's gonna be assigned an advisor. It could be faculty, it could be a, just a professional staff member, but you should utilize this person always because they might know the ins and outs of your program of study, the degree requirements, um, even the different electives that might match well with your own goals. So definitely use this person as a resource. But this person could also give you websites that the um, school has. So for example, um, at the law school, we have different databases that students can actually access textbooks for free. So you don't have to drop a hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars but you get access based on your own student access, your student email address to these free textbooks um, through our databases, which is always nice. Um, so I would always ask them to kind of know if they have um, 
their own services or websites that they can share. So I always share those legal databases with our students because I want them to save money on textbooks. I know textbooks are expensive. Um, and then the other thing too is that the universities always might have other services or freebies um, like USC, we offer all of our students Microsoft Office, um, which is nice so everyone gets uh, Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint, which I know you will use in your classes. And they also get Google Apps. So you could get Hangouts, um, even Google um, Spreadsheet, or what is it called? Google, Google Word? I forgot at the moment, but Google Apps, where you could actually write your assignments um, online and so that way your if your computer crashes it'll be in the cloud um so that we don't have to worry about it like if you were to just keep it on your computer but i would just always kind of figure out what freebies that the university has to students and kind of utilize them so that way you don't have to spend extra money that you necessarily don't have to that's great thank you uh rachel sure so um i agree with all of nick's advice of course i think when you get to uh, your first day, your first week of college, you're going to be um, given so many resources. You're going to get so many emails in your first week of college. It's going to feel like a lot. And there's a couple of things you're going to want to identify right away. I always tell students, one, figure out where the health center is and how it works so that if you're not feeling well, if you need something, you know how to get help um, in terms of the health center. Get to know your resident assistant, your RA. This is the person who is assigned in the dorm to be um, sort of like a support system to the students who live there. They're like an advisor, they live in the dorm with you and they can give you lots of advice. So figure out where the health center is, get to know your RA and then get to know your academic advisor like Nick was saying, because that's the person that can help you guide you through sometimes what feels like a complicated system of picking classes and credits. And all of those folks are gonna be there to support you with the initial things that you need to do. And then from there, you can build on it and start to get to know all of these other resources. The other uh, sort of hack I want to give you before you start college is this. Please go on the internet and Google yourself. Um, please, where are you on the internet? What does your social media look like? Um, what things can be attributed back to you, traced back to you? And ask yourself, is this the presentation that I want to have in college as a college student? to my professors, to my potential employers, to my classmates, um, and really think about not just what is your presence gonna be on campus, but what is your online presence? Uh, because if you are say running for an officer role in a club, if you're applying for a position, if you are looking to take on a leadership role on campus, people will Google you. And so you wanna think about what's out there about me and is it reflective of who I am right now as this college student and what I wanna put forward. Thank you. Um, and to highlight too, for those of you who may not be living on campus and commuting, there's also always an office of uh, either commuter or transfer services. And sometimes those are uh, in tandem and they offer similar support to um, in, um, in conjunction with uh, Residence Life, whose purpose is to help service students who live on campus who may have additional or unique challenges just because of their living situation. But they all provide universal resources in a similar way to help support you um, as students. Uh, great. So Daniel. So I couldn't agree more with what Rachel had emphasized because I was that was going to be a part of what I want to really be clear on. And I think it's because our identities are living online. And so that's sometimes the best way that listen, I Google my students when they're being <laughs> uh, really interesting to have a deeper understanding because I'm just trying to figure them out. And it's just a way that I feel like a lot of us interact and engage with people. But I think it's really important to be conscious on what are you portraying uh, on those platforms? You know, some of the websites and apps that I usually encourage students to go to when going into a new school is really being conscious of the offices of student development or the offices of student life and activities because it's all new but I wanna get associated and connected with people that are like-minded or that I feel I have some type of an affinity with. And so often it's making those connections with those clubs and organizations that are really important because those are gonna be the relationships that I'm gonna to continue to have or to continue to build off of. And the same time, 
I usually have emphasized, and I really build this a strong perspective, with getting connected with your alumni early on, um, there are opportunities that our alumni offices and our fellowship offices have that I think really then outline some of these spaces of security. This has always been a concern for a lot of the first generation students that I work with is, well, I don't know how I'm going to pay for school. So no matter what you're talking to me about, it's not gonna be important until I can figure out how am I gonna get through this? And so sometimes I'm really able to emphasize, look at your financial aid office and see what type of awards you have. If you have federal work study and you have that, you take advantage of that, you know? And you also look at other opportunities that the campus has. If there is an office of student employment that offers you off-campus employment through your federal work study, you take advantage of that. You try to find ways that you can connect with doing your community service and getting compensated for that. You know, these are the key things that sometimes I think I wish I knew. And now I try to help students really find there is so many types of resources out there to support you throughout your whole academic experience. And it's really key to be aware of that as early as possible. Great, thank you all. Um, and so I know we've talked about this kind of in um, specifics, but are there any other um, in particular things that you wish that maybe we haven't covered just yet? First year students in particular knew um, coming into this experience. So Rachel, I'm gonna start off with you. Yeah, thank you. So I think one thing to remember is your professors are just people. I remember being really intimidated by my professors when I was in undergraduate, particularly in the first year. And I thought, who am I to go up and ask them a question? Or they don't want to talk to me. I'm, I'm just a freshman. And I feel like I really missed out on some opportunities because now that I have been a professor, I have taught classes, I am thrilled when people come to office hours, when they ask questions, when they want to talk and dive into materials. Um, and it can feel intimidating in your first year, sort of like, what, what do I have to offer? But this is why faculty is there. Faculty is there to teach you, to help you, to support you, to clarify. And remember, if you have a question, the odds are great that somebody else in class has the exact same question and they're feeling shy about raising their hand too. So when you ask a question, you're doing a favor for a classmate. So I encourage people to speak up in class, to go to professor office hours, even if you don't have something specific to talk about. You just want to come in and talk about how much you're enjoying the class, see if they have some suggestions for you, anything like that. I think that can be a really great way to build connection because later when you will want to, maybe you want to go get a master's degree, maybe you want to apply for a fellowship, having a relationship with faculty will also help you with recommendations, with building your network, with thinking about where you want to go next in your own career. And then the other thing I just want to say is please eat real food. And whenever you don't feel good or you're in a bad mood, ask yourself, when is the last time I had a glass of water? Um, because we drink too much caffeine. We drink too much soda. We don't eat right in college. We don't eat right in general, but in, in college especially, please eat real food. Please drink water and please take care of yourself when you need to. That goes for now too, and us adults can also reinforce that. So that's a really great point. So thank you, Rachel. Um, I'm gonna go to Nick. Um, I would say the big thing is like things take time. So you're not gonna get things right away. And so that's okay. I think it kind of echoes what Rachel and even Daniel were saying earlier, like you're going to experience college in your own way. So just let it marinate over time and just, you know, things will come together sooner or later. I remember my first year of undergrad, I mean, I had a good time. It wasn't the best time. I think I almost wanted to transfer out after my first year just because it wasn't what I thought my experience was going to be. But just talking to like my mom and my friends and even like my advisors, they just said, just let it be kind of experience it, do a new, a new check or a new chapter your sophomore year, your second year. And I think that's when things kind of um, all came together for me. I started to get more involved because I wasn't actually getting involved on campus my first year. Um, and then that's you know how I met Jamie too. Um, in my third year, just making those connections on campus. So I think, you know, 
just let things kind of marinate and everything will slowly come together and you're going to get the experience that you can, but also you have to put in the work to make those connections and get the experience that you want out of it. Because if you're like me, my first year, I didn't really put anything into it. I didn't get really anything out of it. But once um, I started putting in the work, I got, it was more rewarding than I thought it was going to be. I hope that makes sense. That was great. Thank you. Uh, Daniel. I love what Nick just said. You know, it's about what you put in is what you're going to get out. And that's really important and vital to be really aware of. Um, this might be a hard pill to swallow. And I sometimes have a difficulty explaining it to students in such a way. But if you don't get an A, it's not the end of the world. Um, if you don't get a B, it's all good. You get a C, you get an F even, right? I've had a multiple, a handful of students who I have failed but it's not because it was about them being a good student. It was about that they missed the point completely. You're not going to school to get the grades, right? You're going to school to get the content, the material, the, the knowledge. And it's so difficult to understand that. And it's so difficult to then constantly be hearing it from other people saying, well, that's what you should be doing. And that's what you should be going to school for. It's having these conversations over and over that really helps. There's a student who I failed who I think about often because he has come to me for reference letters all the time because of what he's done after that. It's that learning that happens with failure. I love talking about failing. I love talking about the mistakes that I make. I make a mistake at least every hour. I mean, I honestly, I can easily talk about how much I have fallen down because I think it only helps me better understand what is it that I need to do to work that out. Or guess what? It's also okay. Schools aren't going anywhere. You know, I support a lot of my students to go off to do AmeriCorps projects or city year projects or going abroad um, for a semester or going down to DC for a Washington internship. Um, and just trying to give them opportunities and recognize like maybe it's, it's not just about mindset, but it's also the, your environment. And so if you need to change your environment, I think that's really important to help you grow as a person. You're the only person that you're ever gonna be and you need to be conscious of your own checking with yourself, right? It's really important to be aware that your self-assessment of yourself and your self-esteem is really the most important thing that you need to walk away with. And it's something that's really difficult sometimes to hear, but I think it's really important for you to be able to be comfortable with yourself in the long run. That's all really good advice. Thank you all. Um, I, I have an anecdote that I, I always say um, and that I used when I worked in higher education, which is I learned more from an F that I've gotten than any A I've ever received. Um, and the things that you learn are not necessarily about the curriculum, but it is about you as an individual. And it might be how your, your learning style might be and how you're applying that or the ways that you're taking in information. Um, but it's important to know that regardless of that, even if you are getting an A in a course, it doesn't mean that you're getting it. Uh, and what other um, things can you be utilizing on campus that can be helpful to you? Um, every school has writing centers and um, academic support services, but there's also mental health services as well. And it's really important to us to highlight those because uh, whether you are paying for school or you're fortunate enough to be receiving your education through other means, be it a grant or scholarship, or maybe your family is paying for it for you, um, that is part of the what you are paying for. School is, um, all of these other resources are part of that tuition that you're paying for. So utilize them as much as you can um, because that's what they're, they're there to help you. Um, and it's not a burden. These folks want to help you. That's why everyone is working in these kind of realms in education. Um, so I'm gonna put our, our, our three panelists on the spot and then I'm gonna open it to questions um, on a question that they're not ready for, but so I'll give them a minute. If they're ready, they can pop on to answer. Uh, but I wanted to ask them from their undergraduate experience, what is one thing that they know now that they wish they had knew, knew then that would have been helpful to them? So if you know, if it comes to mind, pop on. So I want to jump in and just say, um, I wish I knew at the time 
that what I was majoring in and that I was what I was studying was not necessarily in my undergrad was not necessarily going to dictate what I do for the rest of my life, even if I'm drawing on it in the rest of my life. So I majored in English and I minored in film studies. And now I'm a career services professional in a school of public service. Um, and so I draw on my communication skills, my writing skills, my facilitation skills that I got, storytelling skills through those. But I'm not a writer. I don't teach English. I work in a different field. Um, and I think a lot of times there's a lot of anxiety around, I have to pick a major and then that's going to be my life for the next 50 years. Um, and I just want you to know that for some of you, if that's what you want to do, that is great. Pick your path and go for it. And for others of you, if you're not sure and you're like, this is what I want to do now, that is okay because there will be chances to pivot and to change and to mix things up. So, um, you know, it's there's lots of opportunity to explore and learn in college. And then also just about the, the grade thing, I got a D in geology in my freshman year of, of college and nobody cares and nobody knows. And it is one of those things that I, I, I have only just thought about now. Um, and so please don't stress about your grades. A C or a D or an F is not the end of the world. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your failed geology attempts. I appreciate that, Rachel. Uh, Daniel or Nick? So I, this has been, I feel like, just the, the thing that came to my mind as soon as Jamie had asked uh, the, that question. I wish I didn't care so much about what other people thought of me. That was something that has taken years and years of mental health, you know, therapy, um, really connecting on a spiritual level with folks uh, at church. You know, I got so caught up on trying to impress somebody at the campus center that I was working with or trying to put time and attention into things that I really didn't care about or at all wanted to do. But I was doing it because I thought, well, that's what I got to be doing. I mean, that's the only way that he's going to like me, or that's the only way that I'm going to be committed into the work that I really want to do. I started telling myself these stories, right? And I story tell until I got myself so sick. And I really wish, you know, if I had had the opportunity to go back and to really just be yourself, you know, I sometimes think quite often how much I hurt myself because I was so upset with where I was going, what I was doing. And so it's so important to really be okay with not being okay. And that's something that, you know, when I was at school, I spent a lot of time going to therapy because we were, I was paying for it. You know, these student activity fees that we pay, you got to take advantage of those things because when there's a concert, uh, I took advantage of going to the concert. When there's a free t-shirts, let me tell you, Jamie can contest more free t-shirts than I've ever needed in my life were from my undergrad experience. But I think about these things and I just, I really find it important today, looking back, how important it is to now connect with students and let them know that it's all right. You don't need to have your shit together. It's don't, don't make the assumption that everyone does. And so it's really important to take it easy and to work things out at your own time and at your own pace. Thank you, Daniel. Nick? Of course I did the, the motto of the year, put my, I didn't unmute myself, it happens. Um, I think the one big thing I wish I did more was actually seek help in undergrad. I thought I had to do everything on my own. I thought I had to be, I was independent, but I thought I had to be even more independent. So I thought I had to figure everything out on my own. Um, so looking back now, I know the times where I was successful, even when I thought I was failing microeconomics, I actually went to my professor and study groups, which I think helped me better make sense of it. So I didn't get the D, but I got the C in the class. So it kind of passed. But also like I took an art history class, I was totally lost and you know, going to the professor helped and she suggested joining this, um, one of the teaching assistants. 
And so that was also successful. But I think I always thought I had to do things on my own. I never really sought help. And I would encourage all of you just to do that um, because it will make your life easier. And you don't have to put that stress and pressure on yourself to be perfect or that independent. Because there are people like Rachel and Daniel and myself who work on these campuses that you could reach out to and talk to all the time. And I think I wish I took advantage of that more than I did. That's a great point. Um, and, and all of them are great points. Um, and then to add on to Nick's too, um, like folks have mentioned, you're going to get assigned an advisor. Uh, and sometimes that relationship doesn't always gel for you. And it's okay to explore help from other folks who you might find um, a greater connection with. Um, that's why there are offices. And so if you find that you're more comfortable going to a different administrator or a different faculty member and asking for help, um, please do so because um, people work in education because they want to help students succeed. And so there's different pathways to success for everyone. And sometimes you have to find individuals who you feel comfortable with. So please, please do that. Um, great, so we have about 10 minutes left. I want to open it up to questions. So if any of the students have anything in particular they want to ask, please just unmute, introduce yourself and ask away. If not, I have more questions I can ask, but we'll give you guys a few more seconds. Take, feel free. All right, I'll ask another one just to make sure we um, address some things. What, um, you know, I, I loved Rachel's point. Uh, this is always a fun dialogue for me to bring up about um, your major doesn't necessarily become your career. Uh, it's a fun game I love to play with folks, um, in particular when I'm with other adults. Um, so my fun game is always, you know, my undergraduate major was actually sports journalism, and then I switched it to communications uh, more broadly, and now I work in education. So would you folks share what your undergrad, I know Rachel already has, uh, but Daniel and Nick, would you share yours and then let folks know how you've pivoted. Well, my undergraduate major was actually business administration, which in itself is very broad. Um, I didn't change it throughout undergrad. So I still think I utilize some of the aspects, not so much the, the financial accounting pieces, but definitely the human resources and leadership aspects that I learned um, into my work today as a higher ed professional. So my major had a long name for no reason. Um, it was the Environmental Policy Institutions and Behaviors. And so it was essentially environmental studies. And I'm a kid of the 90s, so I was big into Captain Planet. And any time that I would find myself interested in getting involved with organizations, they were predominantly environmental organizations. In the beginning of my career, when I got into my master's program in at UMass Amherst focused on social justice education, I did really spend a lot of time working on environmental racism or environmental justice organizations. Um, I had had interviews with uh, Sierra Club and Greenpeace quite often in doing essentially organizing of people and being able to come together on environmental issues. It wasn't until I want to say the 2008 uh, general election, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, in Harlem. At that time, I was an organizer and doing a lot of voter registration. Uh, and I did some transitioning there. And I recognized that's really where I wanted to spend more of my time because I was working so closely with a lot of the college students. And so that's when I started my career at City College, working closely with the Colin Powell Center, uh, and really had a lot more opportunities to connect with the opportunity to, to take the social justice education work that I was doing with students and being essentially the matchmaker of connecting them with organizations and uh, nonprofits that they were interested in really doing work that, was, that they were passionate about. Thank you. 
Um, I, this also made me think too, based on um, your response and also Rachel's work, um, do any of you have strong feelings about students working during their first year? Um, and, you know, there versus um, necessity. So some folks may have to, um, and other folks who want to or are interested in doing such. Um, any thoughts or opinions on that experience, both working and, and what it likes to juggle um, be, being a full time student or even a part time student and working at the same time? So, one of the things that I would emphasize is that I think working is important to get some hands-on experience. But I could tell you all, my first job was my first job on campus uh, my freshman year, and I didn't have any work prior to that. But I think it's about finding the flexibility in the work and the projects that I was able to find. And I've really been able to help students have a better understanding that it's important to get something that maybe will help. Um, I don't work well when I don't have a structure. And so sometimes having a work schedule helped me keep the rest of my schedule on track. Rachel, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it, um, it, it, it's a lot to take your first, it's a lot to take in and to absorb in your, in your first semester. And I think like Nick was saying earlier, it's really a process. So some folks are gonna be able to hit the ground running, right? And they're gonna take on all of these things and they'll be able to take on an internship and a work study role. Um, and that's great. But again, this goes back to being really honest with yourself of how do you manage your time? What are your stress levels like? And asking yourself, what is this job for? Some of us practically have to work. Some of us, this job is for money, right? Like I gotta eat. Um, but if you're in a position where your your basic needs are covered and you're working for experience, you want to ask yourself, so what will this what will this opportunity do for me? Will I get to test out something that I've been curious about? Will I get to meet new people? Will I get to learn new skills? Um, and this is where your Office of Career Services can be really helpful to you because they can help you clarify what your goals are. They can help you figure out where to look. If you've never submitted a resume anywhere before, they'll help you make a resume. They'll help you practice interviewing. They'll set you up to have conversations with other people in fields that you might be curious about. So you don't have to do this on your own and you don't have to figure it out on your own. The Office of Career Services can be a thought partner and a coach to you as you're working on these. So we, I joke in career services, we always say your mileage may vary because your situations are so different and so unique. And so, you know, really checking in with yourself, checking in with those support systems and figuring out what will work best for you. Thank you. All right, I know we have just a couple of minutes left, so I wanna give folks an opportunity as they head off to their, ne their next classes. Uh, but really wanna say thank you to all our panelists for being here today. Um, I've worked with all of them in various capacities um, and know that them like other fellow administrators are really committed to making sure your experience um, is great. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have questions. Um, quick email is alumni at brickleycarroll.org or jo.regan at brickleycarroll.org uh, and I can either connect you or answer more questions um, or point you in the right direction. So thank you all for being here. Uh, and we have another, pro we have two more programs um, scheduled in the next week. On Thursday, there is one with Chanel Person, who's going to be talking about emotional intelligence, and another one next Tuesday uh, with two partners of ours from JP Morgan Chase, who are going to be talking about financial literacy um, and uh, fiscal preparedness as you're entering the next phase of life. So thank you all for being being here and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you everyone.